The Nigerian Navy, as one of the three components of the Nigerian Armed Forces, was established on the 1st of June 1956 as the Nigerian Naval Force. It was renamed the Royal Nigerian Navy in July 1959 and the Nigerian Navy in 1963, when Nigeria became a republic. The Nigerian Navy is unique compared to other armed services because apart from its primary military role of defending the nation from the sea, she is also tasked with extensive responsibilities for the protection of maritime economic activities and enforcement of maritime laws. In specific terms, the Armed Forces Act Cap 20 Part 1 Subsection 4 states that the Navy shall in particular be further charged with enforcing and assisting in coordinating the enforcement of all customs laws including anti-bunkering, fishery and immigration laws of Nigeria at sea, enforcing and assisting in coordinating the enforcement of national and international maritime laws ascribed or acceded to by Nigeria, making of charts and coordinating of all national hydrographic surveys, promoting, coordinating and enforcement of safety regulations in the territorial waters and the exclusive economic zone of Nigeria. The responsibilities known in maritime parlance as constabulary or policing duties have placed the Navy as a strategic player in the Nigerian economy. In fact, the Nigerian Navy has, over time, emerged as a major maritime force not only in the West African sub-region but also around the world. This has been made possible by the tremendous growth witnessed by the Navy from a humble beginning to a modern Navy operating out of four operational support bases. To the ordinary citizen, the Nigerian Navy is synonymous with fighting wars. But in contemporary times, the operation of the Navy has gone beyond this to become intertwined with economic survival and therefore the existence and pride of a country as an independent nation. This is better appreciated when one considers the fact that nations depend largely on international trade, the bulk of which is maritime, that is, water dependent. The scenario is better understood when one considers the plight of landlocked countries that have to depend on other countries for access to the sea for both their imports and exports. Given the vastness of Nigerian waters, its rich resource and the regular activities in the maritime sector, the Navy therefore has the added responsibility of protecting our maritime resource and providing security for operatives of the maritime environment. President Goodluck Jonathan fully appreciates the situation as reflected by his address after reviewing the Nigerian Navy fleet in Lagos on 29th September 2010 as part of activities marking Nigeria's 50th independence celebration. The Navy is a very, very unique and important arm of the armed forces. It is only countries that are open to the sea that have the privilege of having very, very functional navy. This is one arm of the armed forces that landlocked countries always envy. And also remembering that movement in the water came before air. Navy become quite unique in terms of the defense of a country in so many respects. The Nigerian Navy has been quite effective in the inspection of the Navy till today, in terms of the capacity of the manpower and the capabilities, the Nigerian Navy have been doing very well. Navies the world over play major roles in international diplomacy. The Nigerian Navy is not an exception. A closer look at the activities of the Nigerian Navy shows that it is also a key player in international diplomacy. The role of the Nigerian Navy as a strategic player in international diplomacy was clearly demonstrated during the presidential review of the naval fleet as two foreign ships, HMS Ocean from the Royal Navy and CDT Blazon from the French Navy, were part of the vessels reviewed by President Goodluck Jonathan. 
In addition, heads of foreign navies from South Africa, Togo, Senegal, as well as representatives of the U.S. Navy, Royal Navy, Ghana Navy, Côte d'Ivoire Navy all witnessed the presidential fleet review. For most oil-producing coastal states, there's a natural connection between the maritime environment and oil exploration all over the world. What is the place of the Nigerian Navy in this connection? To achieve its mandate, the Navy requires enormous resources and sustained logistics. The effort I am making now is the carryover effect of the effort of my predecessors. Uh, it's not a question of a problem just being realized, it has always been there, and the efforts has always been consistent. My watch is just to make sure that we do something more significant about it. Aha. Are we doing about that? We have invested in things like being resourceful, even when resource limitations are challenges. Besides that, we have cooperation with other African navies, uh -huh. Because cooperation itself is a good thing in so far as maritime relations and international relations are concerned. Apart from the relationship with the African brothers, especially Ghana example and some other African navies example, we are also in partnership with the United States of America and other foreign navies under the concept of the African Partnership Session that the Nigerian Navy takes part vigorously in, and in the course of that, we have relations with other friends who are all equally interested in making the sea line of communication and commerce free for all, for the benefit of the region, for the benefit of mankind. In its 55 years of protecting the country's territorial waters, the Nigerian Navy has recorded significant achievements and contributed to the socio-economic development of the country, Nigeria. It's a combination of a number of factors, historical and geographical. Uh, the place of Nigeria in this region uh, is not contestable. We ought to play more leadership role by projecting that responsibility on Nigeria I can extend it to the idea of the Gulf of Guinea Commission and the role the Nigerian Navy is expected to play in that sub-region for several reasons. Uh, Africa has always been a victim of uh, a number of uh, factors that militate against poverty reduction. You see, capacity to exploit our resources at sea has direct relations with the well-being of our people. And it is on, on one side, Nigeria plays a leadership role in the Economic Commission of West African States. By extension, the Navy also is expected to project such leadership responsibilities within the sub-region. That's why, as your question posted, that Nigeria sees itself as a lead player in this sub-region with the, uh, with the objective of furthering uh, reduction of peculiar sub-regional problems. These were made possible by the commitment of its officers and ratings in the discharge of their professional duties and the support of the government. The Nigerian Navy is not also resting on its oars as it continues to acquire new boats and vessels to boost its operations. For instance, 
Four new Meter Manta Class Fast Patrol Boats were acquired in November 2008. The boats have since been deployed to Bonny and Escrabos for intensive patrol. In addition, two new 38-meter boats, NNS Burutu and NNS Zaria, have also been acquired from Singapore. On the 10th day of May 2011, the Nigerian Navy also launched three Manta-class boats at NNS Beecroft Naval Base Apapa to complement the existing ones. The new acquisitions have very high speed and are easily maneuverable. These boats were procured from Vietnam and are highly capable and equipped to combat any form of maritime threat or challenge such as piracy, illegal oil bunkering, pipeline vandalism, smuggling and other illegalities in the nation's territorial waters. The Nigerian Navy has also contributed immensely to the restoration of peace in the Niger Delta under the amnesty initiative of the federal government. This is made possible through the acquisition of 2 by a 109 and 1 by a b 206 Augusta helicopters to beef up its surveillance and search and rescue operations. The Nigerian Navy has also established a special unit known as the Special Boat Service. This is one of the most respected fighting units of all military forces worldwide. It is meant to complement major and special operations such as counter-terrorism, counter-insurgency, anti-piracy, riverine operations and other operations as may be directed from time to time. It is also capable of conducting patrols, board and search, beach reconnaissance as well as beaching and landing operations. The unit also provides support for inland operations as well as operates as ground troops. In its efforts to enhance professionalism, the Nigerian Navy established an underwater warfare school in Navy Town, Ojo, as far back as 1984. The school has trained many naval personnel, as well as personnel from the Army and the Air Force, in diving operations. It is equipped with a decompression chamber, which is 40 meters deep, backpack, safety vests, air compressors, charging box, and a 10 meter diving tank. The school conducts air to sea as well as search and rescue exercises for the personnel regularly to enhance their competency and capability as trained underwater specialists in the Nigerian Navy. In line with the resolve to improve presence in the internal waters and riverine areas where maritime related threats have continued to emerge, the Nigerian Navy has established a new base in Lokoja, Kogi State, known as NNS Lugard, and another one at Ikotabasi in Akwaibom State, called NNS Jubilee. These enviable achievements of the Nigerian Navy would have been impossible without dedicated, equipped, and well-trained staff. What are the welfare programs and how are the staff motivated for optimum performance? For sure, the Nigerian Navy is committed, professional, dedicated, and in tune with global best practices. It is not, however, without its own challenges. The good thing is that the Navy appears to have struck a sympathetic chord with the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, on the issue of platforms, logistics and resources. This much the President addressed when he reviewed the Naval Fleet on the 29th of September 2010. Though we know presently we have some challenges in terms of adequate platforms, but let me assure you that we will make sure that we are properly equipped to function, especially a country like us that have a very long coast and one of our main source of income is oil and you cannot move oil by air. Oil is always water transport and protecting a coastal environment rests squarely in the hands of the Navy. So it is an arm of the armed forces and indeed the whole society that government cannot longer fold its hands and allow it to operate with ineffective platforms. And we can assure you that government will make sure that all your requirements are met because we have no choice. If we don't protect our coastal waters, then it will affect the income of the country. As in Nigeria that is refocusing for another 50 years, the purpose of our celebration is to look at our history, see the areas we've done very well and make sure that we continue the areas that we don't do too well, we make sure we change the way we do things.
The armed forces is one area that we've been doing very well. We are known for peacekeeping globally, and anywhere that the Nigerian armed forces are meant to operate, they come back home with commendations. And of course, the Navy inclusive. I will continue with that spirit. I will continue to encourage you. Looking at the Nigerian Navy, its achievements are tremendous and its dedication second to none. What plans are in place to meet the challenges of the 21st century? The Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ola Saad Ibrahim, speaks on the issue. While I assumed the leadership of the Navy, I thought the first responsibility I owe was introspection in so far as the engineering branch is concerned. The engineering branch is called to service delivery, whatever way you look at it. Uh, this is a Navy that is bogged down with platforms from Western Europe with limited infrastructure to sustain them, and then the kind of engineering practice that will not be rated as best accord in accordance with best practice. Now, introspection from the point of view of the engineering conference was to so search and confirm where the problems lie, where is the way forward. And it was very, very revealing. On one side, we must celebrate our engineers for their capacity for creativity and ingenuity to sustain aging platforms up to this moment. And the fact that we were able to tell our, ourselves the truth to recognize our limitations, to recognize our limitations and to do something about it. At the risk of being oversimplistic, Attitude is one of the problems, and uh, the Nigerian Navy on my watch will do a lot about that. I will begin to see signs now that yes, everybody identifies where we want to go, and we are pulling in the same direction as much as possible. In its efforts to develop greater synergy for drastically curbing the activities of militant groups, the Nigerian Navy, in conjunction with the Army and Air Force, took part in a joint operation codenamed Exercise Nemo on the eastern flank of Nigerian waters. The exercise was meant to test the operational state of naval ships and aircrafts, as well as the capability of the Nigerian Navy logistics in supporting and sustaining sea operations. Exercise Nemo was a success and the lessons learned would assist the Nigerian Navy in conducting similar exercises in the future. Yeah, we must first give credit to the Defense Headquarters for the opportunity to facilitate the Exercise NEMO. Exercise NEMO is served to exercise the three services in the concept jointness. Lessons learned out there, huge, big time. Uh -huh. We were able to improve on capacity to communicate between platforms in the air and those at sea and those on land, besides several other uh, benefits that uh, at the level of uh, uh, the brief, when the exercise was concluded, uh, the three services now know more about how to operate better, and we know that uh, these exercises can come about four times in a year. But it all has a lot of logistical delay there and funding. And that's why I started my answer by thanking the Chief of Defense Staff for making it possible that NEMO took place. In that exercise, it is like an audit of capabilities. And every service went home to see more of their strength and be able to sit well with their weaknesses. Another milestone recorded by the Nigerian Navy 
was its participation in Exercise Obangami Express off the coast of Cameroon from the 17th to the 23rd of March 2011. It was designed to promote the interoperability and proficiency of the regional maritime security stakeholders in the region in concert with the United States and European partners to counter piracy and other illicit activities in the Gulf of Guinea. The exercise provided the participating forces the opportunity to work harmoniously together, share information and refine tactics, techniques and procedures. This implies that countries in the Gulf of Guinea can actually achieve effective maritime safety and security through international military cooperation and collaboration. Therefore, Exercise of Bangami Express provided the opportunity to showcase the Nigerian Navy by reason of NNS Chanwa's excellent performance. In line with the current process of transformation towards achieving improved and sustainable efficiency, the Nigerian Navy has also initiated the process of evolving a workable transformation plan from the year 2011 to 2020 for effective capacity building. Accordingly, a four-day workshop on Nigerian Navy transformation with the theme Capacity Building to Meet the Challenges of the Next Decade was held in Abuja from the 9th to the 12th of May 2011. The outcome of the workshop was the endorsed Nigerian Navy Transformation Plan 2011 to 2020. The identified lines of development under the Nigerian Navy Transformation Plan are concept and organization, fleet acquisition, infrastructure, logistics, doctrine and training, human resources, management and administration, information and communication technology, as well as interagency and sub-regional cooperation. The Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ola Saad Ibrahim, commended the participants for making valuable inputs towards achieving improved efficiency as dictated by the ongoing armed forces transformation process. I therefore charge all the administrative authorities and commanding officers to develop appropriate scope to enlighten your officers and men, including other stakeholders, on the future direction of the Nigerian Navy. By implication, another challenge is the necessity of attitudinal change amongst the men which I regard as a critical requirement for the accomplishment of the development objectives. This calls for institutionalization of the sustained reorientation program in all ships and establishments towards developing the requisites for collective synergy. Subsequent to the endorsement of the Chief of Naval Staff, the transformation plan is expected to be presented to the Navy Board and higher levels of national defense management for necessary approval and implementation. Uh, legacies are overrated words because uh, I don't think because uh, legacy by itself as a word shouldn't be celebrated if one can approximate in his uh, investment of effort to something like a legacy. But I wish I can leave professionally well-satisfied men behind with an efficient service that can deliver on promises in so far as our constitution is concerned. I hope I can leave that behind if that amounts to a legacy. Satisfied men professionally happy to do whatever job they do and enabling environment to serve as press. Uh, I hope I can do that. I think I'll be glad if I can do that. Nigerian Navy, onward together.